Everybody. Welcome to another episode of uh, Chef Ivan Chen Masterclass Podcast. Um, tonight, I have a really unique and interesting story to share with everybody. Um, we we met recently, and and she was one of the guests of some of my dinner. And a lot of people think I was just 
you know, interview food industry and and chef and all that. But but her her story is so unique because I can really relate to myself because everybody knows me knows I was a computer programmer by trade and I I turned into a chef and now we have a indie rock singer who published a couple item like album and now. She is one of the DIY icon to show you how to fix your home, and she have her own TV shows and all that. And without further ado, let's bring in the lovely Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca, how you doing? Hi, nice to be here. Thanks for having me. No, no, thanks for doing this with me. And um, from everyone who is listening to the background right now, that's actually one of Rebecca's song that we are playing. <laughs> I'm gonna turn down the volume so people can hear us talk now, but the music will be still running in the background. So um, a lot of people know you. I'm, I'm sure many of the audience know that they've seen your show if if they have Bell TV, but they don't. A lot of people may not. Done the research and know that you start in the industry as a singer. So, I can know. you tell everybody about how you got into the music industry, Rebecca? Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, I always was, um, y- you know, a lover of music and very interested in music growing up. My family was a very musical family. We sang together all the time at church, at family reunions, uh, occasions, all the time we were singing. My mom used to joke that I came out of the womb singing. So um, I've always loved music and that was a part of my life growing up with piano and violin. And then it wasn't until university that somebody actually gave me a guitar and I taught myself how to play the guitar. And that really changed um, my relationship with music because I was able to uh, you know, go from covering other people's songs like so singing and playing the guitar to actually writing my own songs and taking some of the poetry I had written over the years and turning it into music and songs and started to dabble in that during university but it wasn't until after university that I really actually got into uh, performing and sort of took my music career to the to the next level. <laughs> for, for those of you who are uh don't know. I I guess I'm trying to be a good host. So I've been listening to her music pretty much in the last week nonstop. My restaurant was playing her music every time I'm there working. But anyway, before we go any further, thanks for doing this with me, Rebecca. Cheers. Thank you. (laughs) So, so you are, you are into songwriting. Um, was it something that you always wanted to do or, or you just you just like to tell stories in, in your song? That, that that was a reason that you want love to do that so I think, much? I think I've always loved storytelling. Like I remember as a child, I would write plays with my friends and perform them at, at recess in school. And like after school, I remember having play dates that were about writing plays. So I've always been a performer and loved the stage in any situation so it didn't have to just be for music but um songwriting just took that to another level and um helped me to really uh get in touch with some of the feelings i was feeling through my adolescence and and my early 20s and um, making music just opened up so many new relationships and interesting situations for me to be in and uh, i you know i had a great time in my 20s basically my my music career went from uh, you know, 23, 24 to 31. Um, so I put out a couple albums during that time and I had some, you know, good luck with or fortune getting in with the right people, the right producers, a great label in Toronto called Outside Music, put out my first record that we're listening to a song from here. And then another label called Hidden Pony, which was the subsect of EMI, put out my second record called Odd Fellowship. Yeah. And in that time, I also started this other band called Ruby Jean and the Thoughtful Bees, and we did electronic dance music. So that was kind of like another fringe sort of moment in my life where I was playing these wild concerts and shows and traveling around the world with that band and, you know, having a lot of fun. But it just was such a, you know, such a a wild and sort of crazy time in my life that I think by the time I was 31, I was ready to kind of settle down and take a different creative turn in my life. And um, 
and well, I had a baby, so that really changed things too for me. But how does that feel being nominated for one of the new artists of the year? <laughs> That the year that I was nominated for New Artist of the Year, um, I remember I was really excited because I was nominated for a Female Artist of the Year and New Artist of the Year, and everybody said it was my category to lose. Like that, you know, all the arts magazines at the time were saying I was going to win it. So then when I didn't win it, <laughs> um, you know, I obviously didn't. It was it was kind of a tough pill to swallow, I guess, at the time, but. I'm over it now, Ivan. I have to be honest. <laughs> I don't think about it too much anymore. <laughs> you know, you know, it's one of those things. I mean, I a lot of people knows me knows I I was in the cooking competition a lot with the Canadian Culinary Championships, and trust me, you're never over it. I have I have stuff that I still kind of like, ugh, you know, like I still remember the first time I walk in there, like just related to what you just said. I mean, the first time I walk into in economy championships and i was told by another fellow chefs why are you here mm. well i was invited you cook chinese food oh no i was told in my face you cook chinese food why are you uh, at canadian economy championships been there done that you know well, like every, every time you think of it you're like yeah you don't like it but it is what it is right, right? we we are what we are today mm. um we we all go through that process. It's, it's almost part of it, and yeah. and look at you, you 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 become one of the icon that everybody knowing you for right now. I mean, I have I have my daughter's piano teacher tell me today, hey chef, I I walk by her house every single day and look at that nice pink, amazing <laughs> looking house every uh, week. I love and hearing that. Who. Who can miss that beautiful home that you have? <laughs> you know, it's just just a wonderful, you know, like pieces of the neighborhood. And yeah, and I oh, I want to tell you about the whole exterior of the house and the pink thing and why I did that. But first, I just wanted to comment on the fact that you know, I think as a a chef, when you're cooking food, it's also you know, it's a labor of love and you're telling a story. And you know, you're probably similar to me as a musician or as a uh, not even close. Thanks. Really appreciate it, <laughs> no, Becca. I but mean, no. you, where you're sensitive about your art, you know, this is your art mm -hmm. form, food is your art form. And so I think as a musician, um, you know, you're really putting yourself out there and you're being very vulnerable and you're sharing a piece of your heart when you share these lyrics and these songs that you've written about personal situations that you've been in. And it's really hard to put yourself out there and not take it personally when you get rejected or, you know, people don't like your music or you don't win that award. And, mm -hmm. um, and you know, on top of that, being in your 20s and be, so being like a sensitive artist and then feeling rejection in various ways um, and and just going through that process in my 20s, it, it, was, it was really hard. And by the time I made that shift from music to DIY, I was, um, I was kind of relieved to escape it a little bit or find something else that maybe was a, a little bit more gentler on my spirit. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that that time in my life actually also helped me to develop a thick skin and uh, internal compass or an ability to, you know, a gut instinct of knowing when something is good and what is right and just to do it and to, you know, follow things through and not Most really definitely. listen to the negative chatter that's around you telling you that's a bad idea or don't do that and so um you know my music career probably set me up for where i am now as i'm in my 40s so you know this album that we're listening to right now is don't don't lie to originally people originally 2006 you're not in your 40s i won't <laughs> i won't believe you yes oh thank you i'll take all the flattery but yeah so but you know going from you know being a, this, this how album, has that idea come about diymom.ca like yeah. where was that idea coming well, so that was, um, I was working at, I worked at a film company when I first moved back to Halifax with my, with my baby and I needed to, I was working in commercials and films. Mm -hmm. And as I was working on those sets and working with, um, uh, agencies and, um, writing crews and, and talent and all these different things, I was asking them, oh, where's marketing going to be going in the future? And 
and a lot of the uh, agencies kind of mentioned branded content and that was what we called um, influencer marketing before kind of influencer marketing came about. So that just kind of got me thinking, oh, what would my brand be? And um, and at one point I had this sort of desk job where uh, they wouldn't want any of my ideas. So he was basically like, you can do whatever you want from nine to five as long as you show up and you're sitting at that desk. And I came up with this idea uh, for this concept for a TV show that was sort of a mixture of YouTube tutorials and mm -hmm. HGTV content. And I, in, in my mind, I was like, oh, I like the information from YouTube and I like the before and afters of HGTV, but I don't really care for the drama of HGTV. So how can I kind of cut out that middle part and put the beginning and the end uh, like have the have the before and afters and have the tutorial in the mid middle. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the concept that I came up for the TV sh for the style of the TV show. And then for the DIY and the mom, I as a musician, so my music background, we we were always very DIY and we called it DIY and our we like silk screen posters and silk screen. Mm -hmm. Um, CD covers and record covers and I made little heart shaped brooches and had you know homemade merch and stuff that I sold on the road so you know that was a term that we were using call and we would call it like DIY so I like the symmetry of DIY and MOM and I drew up this little logo and I had this idea and I was invited to the women in film and television um, pitch opportunity where you pitch a show. And I remember I had my little baby, she was two and a half at the time up there with me. And I did a little demonstration, a quick little DIY with her and talked about my concept for the show and pitched, pitched the show. Um, I didn't win the pitch for that, but I remember one of the women that was in charge, you know, like 10 years later telling me that was the most memorable pitch I've ever been in the room of in all of my years that I've done this. Um, so, you know, and despite everybody telling me, oh, that's not a good idea or yeah, that's lame or whatever, I just charged ahead with it and I did it. And, you know, um, what, that's 2014. I started that, so you know I'm I'm at nine years in now, and uh, it's worked out for me. I can't complain. <laughs> Talk about being a trailblazer. Sure. So um, years about internet I, and you know <laughs> media okay, and everything. Oh, and you know what? You, do you mind turning down my um, my song slightly? Oh, sure. So that, so that I don't sure. get distracted by my own voice in the background. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. <laughs> All right. I thought it right um, down now. Yeah, perfect. So um what was the question again? Your question was You really started a lot of things before oh, you know, YouTube and all those things, being a trailblazer is about what mm. you do and and that's obvious. Like you're the one who pitching the idea, you come up with that idea and then and of course you're looking at just in the recent three, four years, especially during the pandemic, how many home improvement you know like content being on on youtube i mean you're yeah. one of the first like yeah. like like you well, started with I it kind of lucked out a little bit i mean because i um you know i went for it and also it's funny how the pandemic happened and everybody was on lockdown but the things that continued were social media tv and renovations and so i kind of lucked out in that time period that I never slowed down. Nothing didn't. Nothing came to a halt for me. It just kind of kept on trucking forward. Um, but yeah, I, I just. So I'm, I guess I'm just kind of one of those people that when I get an idea and I think it's a good one, um, I just charge forward with it and I can make decisions fairly quickly and I put things into action. So I don't like to sit on ideas for very long. If I have an idea, I just, I typically will just kind of go for it and see what happens and I remember even with music I was like I'll give myself three years and if it doesn't nothing ha happens with it then I'll I'll pick something else and then with DIY mom it was just kind of like oh, I'll, I'll try it if it doesn't work then it doesn't work but if it does you know maybe this is the answer to give me some freedom and independence and the ability to uh, take care of my daughter on my own and give us a good life and give us a, a nice house <laughs> on the health expedience line. so I yeah. would not call I I think calling that a nice house is is being modest <laughs> like that is you 
you feel your Bell TV series and all that, and then turn around, you created a landmark of the community, literally. Like, I mean, Thank like, you. just have somebody I know, you know, mention about walking by your house every day and, and how beautiful that looks. And, and even she was like, yeah, but she's still working on stuff every day. So you yeah. still are at it. I mean, you are keep improving. I mean, everyone follow you knows you're always looking for something to improve to 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 get better. But but isn't that just really clearly show how motivated you are about getting better? You know, like yeah. that's 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 one thing that I, I really think a lot of content creator today would need to learn in a way because mm. there's so many of them come out they they put out their con content that people like and then they stop hey right? the content is there people are watching no like you know and and then they just look at the view and count and it doesn't mean anything like you know but but you you always doing something you you put out stuff almost every week like different stuff you're adding to your house and different idea you have i mean halloween's mm. coming today you paint some pumpkins <laughs> <laughs> right uh, I, I mean i was like yeah geez like you know like like but but the whole thing is like like the diy thing like what you did today is is really clear showed that you really stay true to what you do because you you mentioned even in the post that you just found them in the can there at kent and and then those are the two colors that you deal with like that that you yeah. work with today you know, it, you adapt whatever is in front well, of you. Sometimes I'm just at a hardware store and I see discount items and I pick them on, up not knowing what I'm going to do with them. But I saw this can of like very light pink and very coppery gold in the discount bin at Kent. And I just thought, oh, I'll grab those. You know, I could spray paint a table or furniture. And, mm -hmm. and then I literally was like told... You know, I had uh, one of the girls that works with me go out and get some pumpkins because I had to do a photo shoot for my my new front door and my fall stoop. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, it's fall. I may as well get some pump pump pumpkins out there and do the photo shoot. And she came back with all these orange pumpkins. And I was like, couldn't you Not find the right color pumpkins or Cinder <laughs> like Cinderella pumpkins? Do I have to do everything myself? Come mm. on. <laughs> And she said that they, all they had was orange pumpkins. It was a little too early for the Cinderella pumpkins because usually I'll do mm -hmm. like stacked Cinderella pumpkins and stuff. So mm -hmm. I was like, that's fine. You know, I'll maybe I'll just spray paint them. And so I just was like, took out a can of paint, spray paint and just thought, I'm just going to give it a go. Like I'm not priming them. I'm not doing anything prior. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't yeah. work, it doesn't work. I'm just going to give it a go. Spray painted them, put them on the porch, took the pictures and then just released the little reel. They look great. Doing that. Um, but I think part of my success and part of what I, why I did what I did starting with DIY mom and just filming stuff and putting it out there, even when I wasn't an expert and I wasn't very good at things at the start was to encourage and inspire other people to kind of do it, just do it and just yep. like put yourself out there and be vulnerable and, and create something. And even if you know, it's even if you don't know, what's not going to work. Like, don't let that stop you. I think a lot of people get hung up on, well, I don't want to be yeah. embarrassed and I don't want to, I don't want to expose that I'm a fraud or that I can't, I don't really know what I'm doing. And I'm literally like, my whole thing is like, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I'm just giving it a go and it just keeps seems, you know, working, working out. And then I learn little things every time. Um, and I just keep applying the things that I've learned over the years into a bigger project. So like this house that I just did was a massive project. And when I look back at it, I can't even believe that I had the nerve to do it, like to lift a house and like do an extension and change yeah. a roof line. Like who did I think I was to do that? And I, and I just did it. And I, it's like I didn't understand the scope of everything I was doing at the time. I just kind of did it and took the steps every day to do the thing that was going to get me the roof on before it rained next and like put the footings in before there's too much snow and, um, you know, get it. How do I get a backhoe here? How do I get, uh, you know, pump jack so that we can finish the siding? Every day was just a struggle to figure it out and make it work and, you know, it's like a miracle that it, you know it did work <laughs> so I'm glad you know and I have I have friends and I have family that can advise me when I'm in a pinch and I have people I call when I need a name of somebody to do something um, and I use all of those uh, assets and those um, connections that I have built over the year to help me out of difficult spots when I need to but really like the whole concept of the DIY mom thing when I started it was just to 
try like a trial and error, give it a go. Um, the idea that, uh, you know, women can pick up a power tool and try things out. And I think the other big thing for me was um, I didn't want to wait till I had a partner or was married to own a house and to build a, a life for me and my daughter. And I think a lot of people maybe would have felt otherwise, like that it would be better to do this with a man or to have a partner to help you do these things. And I just was like, I'm not waiting. I'm going to do it. I, I'm responsible for a, another person's life here. I want her to have a good life. And um, I'm going to use whatever I, I can to, to do that for us. And so I just trudged on forward on my own. And, um, you know, it just, luckily it worked out. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's luckily. Um, I mean, it's, I, I really believe when I listen to you, I mean, we haven't had a talk like this. We, we met a few times at dinner, but it, it's, it's all about, I really think your success is about how we label your stories to everybody. Like, like, you, you know, like you mentioned, you just leave yourself out there, be vulnerable, you make mistakes, you show people you make mistakes, and you, know, you show people you learn, but not everything is like a Hollywood movie, right? You know, everything's come out perfect. It's there. Like, you know, magic happens. But I, I really think that, like, how popular you are is a lot to do with you. You put out contents relatable to everybody. Like, what, what, you, what you just said is, is really touching because as a mother, you want to show everybody what you can do by yourself without depending on somebody. I, I really think that's a really, you know, courageable statement for anyone who who is single parents to mm -hmm. to just relate to what you are doing like you you're working so hard every day to to pretty much support your kids i i mean mm -hmm. i i feel the same way every day because you know like it's it's really hard to be in a chef and but mm -hmm. every every time that i that i feel like i want to fold a towel like i want to go back to deal computers or something like that and and then i was like no I, I do this for for my family, for my kids, and I'm I feel the same way. I, I mean, it's it's I, I I can imagine how hard it is. It's, it's 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 for a single mother to actually do that, and and you are out there to send out a really clear signal that people can can look at you and look at you as a as a role model for what you're doing with your success. Mm -hmm. And I, that's that's why I think your 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 story is so reliable, and other people would would love to know what how hard you you've been through to mm -hmm. get your big success today. Thank you. Yeah, you know, there's been a lot of um, rough patches along the way, and there's been some real heartache and um, some brutal situations that we've had to go through <laughs> together. Um, but everything that has happened to me, I just feel has. Uh, given me so much more empathy and compassion for other women and who find themselves in similar situations to me, maybe on their own or, um, you know, life hasn't dealt them the cards that they wanted to. Um, I realize that maybe my um, socioeconomic background or my the support that I have from my family has allowed me to dream big and to take risks and to do those things. And other people may not have that that same privilege that I have to be able to uh, do those things. So I just want to acknowledge that, first of all. Um, but at the same time, I think that there are lots of risks that we can take on a daily basis that maybe don't involve, uh, you know, big <laughs> renovations that are costly and expensive. And there are other ways that we can show um, compassion, empathy, and um, teach our children to go for their dreams without, uh, you know, needing it to be a massive pink house. <laughs> well, that massive pink house is, is a landmark and everybody knows about it. And, and that's <laughs> also a piece that signify your success. And, and that's pretty obvious. Thank you. I have so, to tell you a little yeah, bit about sure. this like decision to do a pink house because mm -hmm. you know a lot of people will say that it's very bold. I remember my first house that I renovated um, when I decided to put a pink door on it. Uh, you know, looking at the color, the charcoal color that I had on the outside, and and I thought, oh, the pink door really goes nicely with it. And at the time, I wasn't 
I don't know, I don't think I was like a really, like a pink person, but I always knew that it was a very pleasant color. It's a cheerful color. It inspires hope and, and mm. joy. And, you know, that's why they call it rose colored glasses. If you put on a pair of rose glasses, you, you feel happy. And, and then I remember that feeling of always coming home to a pink door and sort of having this lightness or this little spark of joy that would happen when I came home to the pink door. Uh, so then my second house, I also did a pink door and I started adding a little bit more pink accents and I kind of got known for the pink thing. So when I st just started thinking about this house, um, what I was going to do with it, originally I was going to do like a creamy white or a beige house or something that everybody would like because, you know, I have these voices in my head of people saying, oh, Rebecca, you make such bold decisions and you make such you know, strong artistic decisions with your homes, you're really pigeonholing yourself into who will buy your house from you later on down the road. And so here I'm thinking like, well, maybe I should do a beige house or a cream house or a white house, something that people will really like. And I just wasn't getting excited about it. I didn't have that spark of joy from thinking about creating a beige house. And uh, one Christmas, I guess the Christmas when we started the renovation so we you know we broke ground in I think October um, to uh, we started the, the demoing and then we lifted the house I think in November um, and then in December my uh, daughter's grandmother was visiting from Ontario and she was taking pictures of all the brightly colored houses in the neighborhood and she was like I just love how the East Coast is known for their colorful houses and that just like kind of turned on a light bulb in my head i was like yeah these ghosts need really the most power so we need the most colorful the one, houses and it's like so charming and cute why would i do a beige house like i don't we don't need a bit another beige house on the street there's lots of lovely white and cream colored houses on the street and i was looking around what color does this neighborhood need because i'm always thinking about the neighborhood the context of the space the house the style of the house so like my designs have changed over the years as i've done different styles of houses um and when i finally kind of decided what if i do pink siding like is like maybe I'll do a pink house. Instantly, I just got this spark of joy, like this reinvigoration for the process, like so excited to do it, mm -hmm. to the energy, to like deal with the stress, to deal with all the things that were coming up in the renovation. And I was like so excited about doing this pink house. And so I just like made the decision, ordered the siding and was like, all right, we're doing this. We're doing a pink house. And I just thought I'll switch it around and I'll do a pink house and I'll do a, a wood door instead of doing a pink door but mm -hmm. when i bought this house i thought it was a, a cool omen that the, the house had a pink door when i bought the house um, so that pink door kind of stuck around very to the very last of my renovation projects um because it took a while for that custom door that i i had i thought you're keeping it you said you <laughs> were keeping keep, it i did keep the pink door because it's gonna go on the shed in my backyard and i think okay. eventually hopefully when you know time and money and all that stuff permits i will turn the shed into an office and i'll nice. have that pink, pink door incorporated into it somehow so yeah so any i guess this this is kind of like a different question so is anyone else outside yourself that inspire you to do what you're doing i, I mean you're so upbeat you're so enthusiastic of everything and, and i mean it's I'm sure everybody's listening or watching right now can can feel your energy. Like, anyone motivate you or inspire you to do that other than your daughter? Um, you know, all the time. I feel like I'm getting inspiration, feeling inspired all the time. Even just looking at other houses. When I thought about what I wanted to do with this house, I you know I looked around the neighborhood. I saw how did other people wrap their front porches and their posts and what kind of spindles did people do and what's a what is an old school door with transoms and side lights look like in this neighborhood and sort of researching you know houses in the neighborhood um, and then also finding lots of inf inspiration on uh, Instagram and on Pinterest and just you know just a sponge for information whenever I meet somebody that works in um, this industry or has a unique you know I'm always asking questions I'm very curious I'm very investigative I'm interested and I I um, I've always been an avid learner and, and a very curious person so I'm just constantly soaking up whatever information I can but 
Um, there's lots of people that I like. I love Ember Interiors. I like mm. Caitlin Wilson Design. I like Annie Selke. Um, you know, I love, there's a few HGTV shows that I, you know, I like. Um, Jillian Harris has been a great uh, inspiring person, another Canadian that's kind of made an empire for herself. Um, there's tons and so many women that I look up to and are doing things so well and better than I do. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the inspiration is everywhere. You just have to be op open your eyes and look look for it. You know, <laughs> it, it's kind of how would I put it? What you just said is really making me feel like that's exactly how you make me feel the first time you were eating at my restaurant <laughs> because. My first impression was like, my God, like she's so smart. She asked questions about the food and, mm -hmm. and she's not only asking questions, she was giving me answer that I did not expect her to have. <laughs> and, and it was impressive. Like I just remember there was a couple of dishes you, you, you were asking me, it's like, my God, like she really got all those things. And, and, and I can really feel that like right now that you are, you're somebody that that's always learning, right? You're always collecting information mm -hmm. from anything around you. And, and that's why you are so creative with, with what you do. I mean, like it's, it's so obvious right now, your, your creativity of, of your work is, it's just the way with your personality, how motivated you are to actually okay. nonstop learning. Thank you. And you know what? And I love food too. <laughs> and I will, I love a chef tasting. That's my favorite thing. I want to go to a restaurant. I just want people to give me whatever food they think that they're passionate and excited about. And I will try it. I will eat anything. Um, and yeah, I, that's like my happy place is a chef tasting meal. It's, it's so fun. You um, will be at my next tasting. <laughs> Just so I can guess the ingredients. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but, you know, it was, it, was, it was a fun one, you know, mm. last week. It, it was a fun little full of tasting menu. You know, I enjoy it. That's what I like doing. But, you know. Mm -hmm. But what is the most memorable project that you have done? Well, I, I mean, I think lifting this house was was extremely memorable because that day was such a fun and exciting day for even the people on the street like everybody came out to watch it yeah i saw that so yeah like i saw that as gathering I thought. to watch it yeah. and i i didn't even know like literally uh uh you know i remember visiting friends in cape breton and talking about the house and this new project i have coming up and they're home builders and they were and I was saying, oh, yeah, I want to put a basement apartment in, but it's only like six feet in the basement, so I need to dig down a couple feet. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, you can lift the house up. And I didn't even know that you could lift a house up. I was like, what, really? So yeah. I was curious about it, and I looked into it, and I felt like, hmm, this is a unique idea. We're, we're gutting the house anyway. We have to redo all the heating. We have to redo all the plumbing. We have to redo mm -hmm. all the electrical. So everything's going to be disconnected. What if I did lift the house and that way you get bigger windows, a lot more light. It doesn't feel so basement knee in there. Um, and so I found these brothers called Jimmy, um, Jimmy house lifting or something like that. They lift like three or four houses a week. They move houses. They lift houses. I was, I, I had no idea this was possible. And I was kind of very excited, intrigued, scared, but like the whole idea was pretty exciting. Um, and they, yeah, they, one day we literally, they brought in beams one day, we put the beams in, they, they created these um, stacked wood sort of, well, there's a, probably a ter technical term for it, I'm not remembering it right now, but to jack up the house with these four jacks in the corners of the house. So the house was kind of like tilting like this as it went up higher and higher and higher until it kind of came. I'm scared to just to think of it right now. So here's this like three-story house up on these little stilts and there's a uh, 24 or 28 inch gap like I think we made it just enough so that we could get everything in and my carpentry crew was amazing they had made all of the um, knee walls prior to the house being lifted so we stuck the knee walls in they secured them and literally by 10 a.m. the next morning the house was back down and on the knee walls and then we wow. um, yeah like so it was an amazing process it was so exciting um, you know, there's nothing, you don't feel, there's no way to feel any more invigorated and more powerful than lifting a hundred year old house yeah. 
two feet in the air. So that was a really exciting, exciting day for sure. It's something I'm really. I remember proud. when I saw that reel when you when I saw that clip that you you get under a house. I, I was getting scared. I was like Rebecca, <laughs> would you Everybody's scare like, you under your a house? You, you dummy, where's your heart at? Yeah, I was like, what? What? Like, what are you doing? You're getting under there, like. You know, yeah, I, I, I feel scared for you. They weren't wearing hard hats. And I was looking at them like, should I have a hard hat on? They're like, no, no, you're fine. We do this all the time. Like, they're not worried about <laughs> it at all. I'm like, okay. Yeah. No, that that was that was a heck of a story. I remember I was watching that. And I was like, oh, my God, like, is she under there? <laughs> <You know? laughs> but yeah. what is what is the biggest trend right now for, for DIY stuff? What What is a... Uh, hottest trend that people are doing right now like, you know, well, you know, for their home I've, I've done like some i'm kind of into lime washing right now and i've done uh, it in my own home i did it in a client's house and i'm seeing lots of videos pop up on instagram for lime washing um i was like shoot i should have released my video for lime washing um you know last spring when i did it but <laughs> oh. but i think that's a pretty big trend wallpaper is really trending um lots of different accents like uh, you know adding trims to walls and um, um uh, timbre and and creating sort of dimension in your rooms and your spaces using sort of trim wallpaper all these color you know color on color tone on tone so like if you um have uh, a blue wall and you also do the ceiling and the trim blue um, with high gloss that can kind of create this pop and a little bit of interest in your space um, you know i think things a lot of things are moving away from just being all white and um you know when i started out renovating and designing i kind of was like paint it all white and it looks great and that was like that was the you know, as far as my aesthetic went, but as I've developed and become more interested in color and adding color into my home, and I think COVID also made me want to add more color into my home because, you know, you're, you spend, we spend the majority of time in our home. And so walking yeah. into a beige or a gray home um, may not be as uplifting as say walking into a house with a, with, with some blue or some pink or some green or some kind of color to cheer you up. The color really, affects and transforms our, our moods and and i love creating warmth and texture and depth in a home by had adding things like drapery and carpets and staircase runners and layered rugs and accents and um blankets and you know just creating a cozy home space by having te different textures and the other thing i always tell people if they're looking to redo a space or do something at their home is like don't just go to one store and buy everything from one store because then you'll just look like you have an ikea showcase in your home mm -hmm. you know you need to get something from different places you need to pull in vintage heirlooms and uh you know some things from your mother and from your parents and personal items and books and um and then things from different stores and shops and maybe something that's like that you got on facebook marketplace and then something that you got uh at like a designer shop so just having a variety of high low items in your home and um you know maybe picking out that one expensive accent piece and then designing the space around it you know not everything has to be super expensive there's lots of great options out there for people that don't have the money to buy five or six thousand dollar chairs so um you know so for me i i guess you know i'm not really saying like necessarily what the trends are but it's definitely in terms of style and design make your space yours show your personality you know add pops of color add add elements of history and personality and who you are. Like I love to decorate with instruments. I like to hang guitars on the wall and I like to have a piano in my home. Um, you know, and I collect eclectic art and I like local artists and I like to find unique art from, from artists that are just getting started. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not necessarily just, you know, just get out of the big box stores and get something that's unique. That's my tip. Talk about something represent you. I'm going to change the background now to something represent you. <laughs> a picture of your house. Yes. I mean, who 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 would miss this in, <laughs> on Vernon Street? Yeah. But um, you know, it's kind of funny. You 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 mentioned about wallpaper. Other than my family, probably 
not a whole lot of people knows that I grew up. My my father is a contractor. Hmm. He actually designs stuff, and he he do have some design that that show up in like home improvement magazine and stuff in the older days. Cool. So so I grew up in the eighties. That back in those days in Hong Kong, everything is wallpaper. Literally everything. Mm-hmm. Like like they have contractor just do wallpaper. That's all they do. But but it seems like you know it was gone. And but but it sounds like it is coming back. I, I remember the first couple of homes that we live in. Uh, the wall are uh, all wallpaper, include the ceiling. It was it was crazy, and and you know it's kind of like not anymore. And then seems like wallpaper are coming back. I see you, you know, working with wallpaper again and, and stuff like that. And and I, I have to follow your contacts so 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 I know what is what is what is current, mm-hmm. which you know. And, and uh, I just no, it's it's all those things come and goes, right? And there's people that have like wallpaper PTSD from when they've had to peel over off wallpaper you know to Mm -hmm. so for some people wallpaper is not their favorite they wouldn't want to do that they don't want to take that kind of risk i mean i just did my powder room and i added um it had wallpaper and some of the wallpaper we had kind of painted over and just put the new wallpaper on so we kind of primed the walls and put new wallpaper on Mm -hmm. some of the space was new drywall and so it wasn't wallpapered um but yeah you can always you can always paint and wallpaper over wallpaper um instead of taking it down okay uh and there's also lots of wallpapers that are peel and stick that are removable and there's removable wallpaper paste and you know they're making it easier for you to get the wallpaper off if you change your mind down the road but so when i did this house it was a craftsman style home um and the era of the house was 100 years so it was a 1922 wow. house so you know i was looking at history and looking at some inspiration of craftsman style sort of new england homes to kind of think about what i wanted to do and with some of the design choices inside the home and i was watching 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 i was watching this show called dickinson on apple tv and every room had like painted trim and wallpaper uh, really bright, wild, crazy wallpapers. And I just was, I was so attracted to the aesthetic of this home. I was like, how could I do that? But a little bit more muted, like not so loud, not bright blues. I didn't really want, you know, I was having a pink house on the outside. So I wanted the house, inside of the house to feel a little bit more neutral, a little bit more settled, a little bit more, um, less contrasty and, you know, tone on tone and have these things. So I found this wallpaper that I loved that was a fairly neutral wallpaper called Orange Tree. And I picked out that wall color, the ceiling color, the trim color from a color in that wallpaper. And Wind's Breath by Benjamin Moore was that closest tone. Painted all my trim wall ceiling that color and then added that wallpaper up my staircase and in my hall upstairs. And it's one of my favorite features of this home. Um, I'm really glad I did it. I feel like it's it's a classic look and it goes with the era of this home. And so, um, you know, like my last home was a mid-century modern home. So I did a lot of retro 50s, 60s wallpapers with floral prints and different, you know, textures that I felt were of that era of that mid-century modern era to fit with the home. But I always love adding a little bit of texture, a little bit of pattern, pattern, Always on pattern evolving. little cover color. Yeah. So, um, you know, when it came to designing and picking out the wallpaper and fixtures for this house, I was like, let's just go for it. Let's put some wallpaper. It's a lot. Of, let's put a lot of wallpaper. <laughs> so, so everybody have been listening to your inspiring story. And for you, I guess for you, what is the most rewarding thing? To start DIYMom.ca, what is the most rewarding feelings for you? That I think it's yeah, it's rewarding that people said it was a bad idea that I shouldn't do it, and it worked out for me. That's that's rewarding. It's rewarding that I have a I live in a great neighborhood that my daughter goes to um, an amazing school and she's happy and she has friends in this neighborhood and we finally feel like we're really settled and this is our our, our home. You know, this is our long-term home. That's that's really rewarding for me. It's it's very rewarding for me to have um, you know created this home that that is ours. But it's also you know for me, 
um, I grew up in a family that we had a very um, uh, justice and oriented sort of perspective on the world and what we can do to improve and better the world and how we can give back. There's a lot of talk about give back in our home. So for me, it's very rewarding when I'm able to be generous with my money and I'm able to give money away and I'm able to help people, um, especially like working for charities that support women like Adsum and Alice Housing. Um, you know, I've done some work with Habitat for Humanity. So now that I can have a little bit more balance, like we're settled, we're in this house, and I feel like I can have some time to donate, um, and I have some money to donate, it feels great to give away money. And if you're a person that's out there listening that, even if you don't have a lot of money, if you just start, start to give away a little bit of money um, on a monthly basis, it just, op that generosity path that opens up your heart and your ability to uh you know give to make the world a better place um you will see that trickle down effect into your own life and to your own happiness and to your own joy i listened to a podcast one about the spirit once about the spirituality of money and how we need to let money flow like water and when you try to hold on to your money too tightly it becomes stale so mm -hmm. when you let your money sort of flow and give it out to other people that it's almost like the water keeps flowing and that stream never dries up and that well never dries up and it seems to be that I'm always sort of taking care of and we're okay so the more generous I get to be like the happier I am um, that's a wonderful feeling so um, that makes me really happy that I'm at the place in my life where I feel like I can be generous um, and where you know I, I'm not worried about other people's success I'm not like I don't get sad or frustrated when I, or why didn't I get that, you know, being, feel, realizing that there's enough space in this world for everybody to be successful and other women to be successful uh, and other people to do DIY projects that get more hits than me, that have more viewers, that they grow more rapidly, their audience is growing. That is great. And I am happy for them. And I, I have, you know, like having that internal um, peace about mm -hmm. like your own success and your own journey and that this is exactly where you're meant to be right now. And if it didn't happen for you, it wasn't meant for you and something else is coming. Um, that type of uh, attitude has allowed me to experience the joy and fulfillment that I have out of this life that we've created. What a beautiful speech. <laughs> I, I I've been thinking about in my head. I, I mean, I'm, I, I was about to say something that a lot of keyboard warriors probably gonna thank me for it, but I don't care. I'm gonna say it anyway. Um, after listening to how your perspective about helping other people and stuff like that, man, our Rebecca's not even beautiful outside; it's even more beautiful inside. Thank you. I just want to say that uh, some people's gonna thank me for it, but but that is that is what going through my heart. Everybody knows that that I don't have filters, but you know, uh, mm. but but that's exactly how I feel. I speak my mind. Thank you. But so um, much. any future plan or expansions of your website that you're planning to do? Um, you know, well, I'm just doing so much client work now, and it's great. I remember um, my dad saying to me one time, Rebecca, you need to stop spending your money on these renovations. You need to start spending other people's money to do your creative, creative ideas. And so I'm just so lucky that I have all these people that reach out to me through social media, through my website, by nice. email, to hire me to help them with their renovations and their design projects. And um, that's really exciting. So that business business is just expanding so quickly. My clients are expanding and growing so fast. Um, I'm able to hire more people and bring more people in to work with me and to help me to execute these projects. And um, that's really fun. And I love working Need with Need a people, private chef? Apps. Well, one day I will. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> you can come and, uh, why don't you come to my karaoke Christmas party? Do you like to do karaoke? Yeah, I'm from Hong Kong. What do you think? <laughs> Then yeah, you can come to my karaoke Christmas party and bring bring some of your Peking duck. How about? Uh oh, here we go. <laughs> he, he comes to duck, or just the, the Peking duck spring rolls then. <laughs> yeah, but um, anything else you you like to share with the audience about about your maleficent inspiring story? 
Oh, well, you know, I just really appreciate when people care and watch stuff and engage with the content online and, are, are in, you know, it's just so nice to get feedback. I love sitting on my front deck every night and hearing the comments from people walking by um, mm -hmm. that they love the house, that it cheers them up, that they like to see the pink and, yeah. um, you know, that that kind of feedback and hearing that stuff it just it just makes me so happy so i'm just delighted you know when people walk by say hi if you're you know on social media dm me i respond if you want to email email me i'm here um to support and help people whoever i can um and uh you know just yeah just excited for whatever comes up next is I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just speaking what am I going through my mind about you. And, and I mean, I, I really get to hear you and know you tonight. And, and it's, it's kind of funny because, you know, like you, you really think most of the celebrity like yourself just want to about like me, 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 but you, we can, I can feel the way you, you speak, the way you represent yourself, that how, happy and excited that you that you felt about helping other people mm. which which is some people everyone who's who knows you or know of you need to know everyone's human too right like like you are you are people too and and that's that's something that i that i think during the conversation you you really show a lot of people it's like hey you're not just that celebrity celebrity on 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 bell tv like like you are people that cares about what is around you. You 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 have your backstory. What support you to do and motivate to do what you do, and how successful you are. And and that is a really big reason behind everything of your success. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, it's nice to hear those things. And uh, you know, I'm just so amazed that this 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 seems to be working out so far. <laughs> Oh well, so, it's, it's, you know, I'm it's, just it's enjoying kind of... it. Well, less and who knows, you know, I might have to make another career change um, this decade. We'll see, but you know, I'm just, I'm just along for the ride and just trying to, um, you know, it's a daily practice of it being is. grateful, practicing your gratitudes, um, you know, reminding yourself that uh, there's just bigger things to worry about. Like, don't sweat the small stuff, and. Um, you know, to always try to tap into your empathy and your compassion for humankind and other people that don't have the same privilege as you do. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's a work in progress, but um, I'm isn't just that really life? Happy it's, it's a progress be. every single day, right? I mean, yes. just just how positive you are. It, it just just so inspiring, you know. And uh, but anyway. Uh, I'm gonna wrap up wrap up the interview tonight. Uh, thanks for doing this with me, Becca. Thank you so much for having me, and I really appreciate all the food that you've cooked for me. It's been an amazing experience. I hope one day I can go to Hong Kong. <laughs> it's just the beginning, yet. You yeah. Yeah, more. And taste the food there, um, but I, I love it, and I really appreciate you having Thank me on you. the show tonight, connecting with your audience, and anybody who's tuned in to listen tonight, or if you're gonna watch this video down the road um yeah thank you for your ears and your attention so uh i'm gonna let rebecca off the screen now i'm gonna talk about the next episode i have a big announcement to make i have not told anybody yet not even rebecca so Ooh. um <laughs> but uh thanks again rebecca don't leave yet we, we we are gonna chit chat a little more af afterwards and thanks everybody for listening and Next episode, we are going to have my favorite mythologist, um, Cody LeBlanc, is going to be my guest. Uh, we're going to talk about his stories. I mean, how how making cocktails, good cocktails, so important in the food industry right now. But I have been working on a new project of the podcast. Um, there's a lot of uh, people approach me and ask me about a podcast and I have a few ideas that I'm working on. I, I have not told nobody yet, but I am turning the restaurant into a part-time studio. Uh, we will be, I'm trying to, in the next month, move the podcast to record at the restaurant. So I'll be face-to-face -face with the guests 
and we will be I will be cooking some food that they never seen before, and let them taste it during the podcast. So that's the ideas that we're working on. We we are taking the next two weeks off, and I, I hope I can execute in the next two weeks. But Cody will be with me the next episode, and hopefully next time I'll see you at the restaurant and show you some food too at the same time. So thanks everybody. Um, it was great to have Rebecca tonight. Uh, it, it was really a lovely conversation, a lovely story that that she present us, and she really show a different side of Rebecca Hicks that a lot of people only see on TV. How great a person and upbeat and positive she is. So I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching tonight.